What captured national recognition for the Effingham City Hall was this sculpture, this flame of hope. Jim and I both saw that they were asking for nominations for Best City Hall. I decided to pick a special feature that we have, which is the Flame of Hope. The City Hall Madness is a national contest organized by the engaging local government leaders that focuses on the physical structure of a city hall and the amount of community support it receives. And to win, a city hall needs lots of support. Using Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, trying to push information out about the contest, getting people to vote, because it's based upon votes. And soon, the votes came pouring in for Effingham. News started to spread, more shares and everything. It's just been amazing, actually, to see how many people are involved in it. So what stands out about this city hall? You know, we have a gorgeous city hall. It's 20 years old. It's basically locally designed and locally built. Both Jim and Sasha say the contest has generated a new wave of hometown pride. It's giving us some assurance that people like what we're doing here. They like our city hall. They're proud of our city hall. It's really great to know that your city hall is appreciated, that your town can rally behind you, and I think it just shows the pride of Effingham. For a town of 12,000, national recognition is a pretty big deal. Reporting in Effingham, I'm Kaylee Custer for WEIU Newswatch. They're the first line of defense, more or less. They're the ones that, if they spot a tornado, I get, to, I get the certain sirens go on. Although some storms are dangerous, severe storm spotter training is vital to keeping a community safe. Spotters take a training class that consists of identifying and verifying storm clouds and other severe weather signs, monitoring changes in the atmosphere, and keeping the public informed and updating them during severe weather events. It's just a very good class. Even if you don't want to be a storm spotter, it just, gives, it just kind of opens your eyes to what we're doing and where we're, you know, we're putting these guys out there in the field and the kind of harm they can get into. Coles County EMS Director Dan Enzen says he has over 40 spotters in the Coles County area that are trained to monitor unfavorable weather conditions. Around here, we don't get tornadoes during the day, we get them at night. And how do you look for a tornado at night? You wait for a flash of lightning and you look around to see, look, look for the different shape. Enzen says severe weather in the Midwest peaks during the months of June and July. Reporting in Charleston, I'm Kaylee Custer for WEIU Newswatch. It's tough because, you know, grew up grew up and worked in the shop uh, for many years and when you clean it up it you know you'll it's just it's not never going to be the same regardless behind me is what's left of Ivan's workshop a daunting task to clean up by themselves but with the help of the community it should be cleaned up by the end of the day it's just unbelievable the the outpour of support and you know that came in people showed up I mean there's you know there's many of them that they took off of um, work you know they didn't go to their jobs just to come here and help. Officials say a diesel engine exploded leading to the fire. Sullivan assistant fire chief Arlen Long says eight fire departments helped out. He says extinguishing the fire without hydrants was a challenge. We actually planned for this and we have automatic mutual aid for real uh, situations like that and uh, it's, it's difficult but it's something we planned for. Business employees say the damage totaled around one million dollars. But for the shop, it was much more than that. But as far as the production area and all that, it, it's anything in the production part is, there was nothing that got saved. Everything is completely destroyed. It was about a year ago that Otterbein United Methodist Church in Charleston experienced a significant break-in. I was coming into the sanctuary for some other reason and uh, just came walking down this side aisle and suddenly I was stepping on glass and I thought, where'd that glass come from? And I realized that there was a big hole in this window right here. But recently, a different string of burglaries has businesses on alert. The Charleston Police Department says just after midnight Tuesday, they came across an open door at the Colgan Water Conditioning Building. Upon investigating the open door, officers found and arrested 29-year-old Tyler Ware of Charleston. Charleston Detective Tony West says during the investigation, Ware confessed to burglarizing three churches, four businesses, and one vehicle. Police say money and other items were taken. And Pastor Trent says there's still something that he can take away from the situation. These are the people to whom we have been called to minister. People who feel desperate enough that they have to steal.